All right, in this video, I want to talk about factoring uh, trinomials that are of the form x squared plus bx plus c. Uh, they would look something like this, right? x squared plus bx plus c. And we're just letting b and c be integers, right? So some examples would be, say, like x squared plus 5x plus 6, um, x squared plus x minus 20, right? Uh, and it doesn't have to be uh, restricted to just x. You know, we could use other variables. So a squared minus 4a minus 21, it still fits that form of x squared plus bx plus c. Right? Everybody see that? You would just have b would be the negative 4 and c would be negative 21. All right, so the c part here has a name. It's called the constant term. So like on this first example, x squared plus 5x plus 6, the constant term is 6. Right. The second one down here, the constant term is negative 20, and the last one, the constant term is negative 21. Right. So I just want to make sure we understand what the constant term is, because I'm going to refer to it here in just a few moments. All right. So the whole idea on factoring is to rewrite an expression as a product, right, of factors, a product of things. Before we get to the factoring, though, let's refresh our memory on um, some multiplication. All right. So. Recall that x plus 3 times x plus 4, when you multiply that out, you distribute the x through and then distribute the 3 through. So you'd have x squared plus 4x and then 3x plus 12, and we combine the 4x and the 3x up to get 7x, right? Remember that? So x plus 3 times x plus 4 multiplies out to be x squared plus 7x plus 12 x minus 3 times x minus 4 multiplies up to give us x squared minus 7x plus 12, right? Same uh, logic that we had before, right? So what I want to talk about here is that we've got these two binomials, right, in each one of these examples. In general, if a trinomial is going to factor, it's going to factor into a product of, of binomials. N not always, but a good number of times, right? So uh, I want to talk about these binomials over here. They have Look at x plus 3 and look at x plus 4. These two binomials have the same sign in the middle, right? And x minus 3 and x minus 4, they have the same sign in the middle, right? They're both minus. Up here, they're both plus. So I'm going to refer to, to these two examples here. The signs in the binomials are the same. That's the, that's the sign that's in between each of the two terms, right? So we've got a plus and a plus. We have a minus and a minus down here, right? Okay, so we'll, we'll come back to that. Now what about down here, all right? Well, now I'm going to refer to these as the signs in the binomials are opposites. All right, where well, we have x plus 3 times x minus 4. If you multiply that all out, uh, you'd have a, a positive 3x and a negative 4x, which goes to a negative x, and then a positive 3 times negative 4, which gives you negative 12. So this all multiplies out to x squared minus x minus 12, whereas down here, it's uh, x squared plus x minus 12, because you would have a 4x and a negative 3x that are added together to give you that positive x in the middle there. Right? So those are our two situations, right? Either the signs are going to be the same in the binomials, or they're going to be opposites. One's going to be a plus, one's going to be a minus. Right? But you're going to have a binomial times a binomial, generally speaking, and the signs in each of those binomials are either going to be the same or they're going to be opposite. Right? Okay. Now, notice the following. For these first two, notice that the constant term, we're looking at x squared plus 7x plus 12 and x squared minus 7x plus 12. Notice that the constant term is positive. It's positive 12, positive 12, right? Then notice that the middle term, the 7x here, everybody see that? The sign of the coefficient of that middle term is the same as the signs that are in the binomials. So since this is a plus 7x up here, we notice, oh look, that's a plus uh, and at 3 and a plus 4 inside the binomials, where when this was a minus 7x, uh, the signs in the binomials are both negative, right? They're both minus signs, right? Now that happens if the sign of the constant term is positive, right? If the sign of the constant term is positive, then the signs inside the binomials here are going to be the same sign, and they're going to be whatever the sign of the middle term is. And I'm going to word it that way when we do our examples here in a minute. Right? Now, when the signs in the binomials are opposites, we notice that the constant term now is negative. Right? And when the con let's look at this first one. When the constant term is negative, then the sign of the coefficient of the middle term is the same as the sign of the larger number in the binomials. 
Everybody see that 3 is larger than 4, so 4 has the same sign as the sign of the middle term in our trinomial. Look at the one down here, right? 4 is bigger than 3 again, and we multiply that out. The middle term here, the sign was the same as the sign of the 4, right? Because 4 is bigger than 3. All right, so we're going to say it this way. If the sign of the constant term is negative, then the signs inside the binomials have to be opposites, and the sign of the middle term goes with the larger number. Now, having said all that, this only applies, only applies when we're of the form x squared plus bx plus c, right? In other words, the coefficient of x squared here is a 1. If the coefficient of x squared is something else, this does not apply, and there are other techniques to deal with that. Right, but if we if we get this down uh, and understand what um, how to handle the the trinomials when the coefficient of the x squared there is a one, this can become really fast. All right? Okay. Here we go with some examples. All right. Example one. We have x squared plus seven x plus twelve. All right. So here's kind of the way I I like to explain it. The first thing you look for when factoring is always the greatest common factor. So is there anything common to all three of your terms here? No. There's no uh, greatest common factor. The second thing I like to look for is how many terms do we have? If we have two terms, then we try to see if it fits into the difference of two squares, which we talked about in a previous video. Um, there also could be a sum or difference of two cubes, which is a different thing altogether. But if you have two terms, you try to factor it using one of those other techniques for factoring with two terms. If you have three terms and it has the form x squared plus bx plus c, Right? It's not x to the fifth plus 7x plus 12, right? That's not, that's something completely different, right? This is x squared plus bx plus c. If it has that form and the leading coefficient of the x squared there is a 1, then we can try to attack it this way, all right? If we look at the constant term 12, right? So we go off the side here and we write down 12. Write down all the factors of 12. I recommend starting at 1 and going in order, otherwise you might um, miss one, right? So here's what we're going to do with these. We're looking at factors of, the, of 12 that, and since this last sign here, the, the sign of the, of the constant term, since it's a plus, then we want these factors over here to add. We want to add these factors, and we're looking for ones that add up to the coefficient of our middle term. All right, so I'm going to say that one more time. We want factors of 12 that add up, because the sign here is a plus, the sign of our constant term is a plus, factors of 12 that add up to the coefficient of our middle term, 7. So we come across here and we say, all right, 1 plus 12, they add up to 13. 2 and 6 adds up to 8. 3 and 4 adds up to 7, right? So this is what we need, 3 and 4. All right, so we come over here and we say, if this is going to factor, it's going to factor into a binomial times a binomial, right? The first part of the binomials has to be x, remember, because you have x times x gives you x squared. And then the 3 and the 4 that we just found go in the second parts, all right? Since the sign of the constant term is a plus, then we know that the signs of the binomials have to be the same sign, right? They either have to be both plus or both minus. And they are whatever the sign of the middle term is. In this case, it's plus. So we put plus 3 and plus 4. And thus, x squared plus 7x plus 12 factors into x plus 3 times x plus 4. You can check that by multiplying this out, and you will get x squared plus 7x plus 12. Right? All right, we have several more examples to try to get this um, idea across. All right, let's look at the second one. y squared minus 5y plus 4. All right, so again, is there a greatest common factor? No. Uh, do we have two terms? No. We have three terms, and it's of the form x squared plus bx plus c, right? The coefficient of the y squared term there is a 1, right? So we just need to look at factors of our constant term. So factors of 4 that what do we want to do? That add up, because it's a plus, that add up to 5. Well, that's 1 and 4, right? The other factors are 2 and 2, right? 1 and 4 add up to 5, so those are the ones we want. So we come over here, and we do our parentheses. We say, all right, y, y, 1, 4. And what about the signs of the binomials? Well, again, since this last sign is a plus, the signs of the binomials here have to be the same sign as the sign of the middle term, so minus and a minus. And if you multiply this all out, you will get y squared minus 5y plus 4. So y squared minus 5y plus 4 factors into y minus 1 times y minus 4. y minus 1 is a factor of y squared minus 5y plus 4. y minus 4 is another factor of it. 
again, we are taking a trinomial and rewriting it as a product of factors. Right? That's the whole idea of, of factoring is to rewrite an expression as a product of factors. All right? Let's look at uh, let's look at the next example. All right, x squared plus 2x minus 35. So again, you walk through this. We walk through the process of saying, is there a greatest common factor? In this case, no. Uh, is there, are there two terms? No. Uh, there are three terms, and is it of the form x squared plus bx plus c? Yes, it is. Is the leading coefficient there one? Yes, it is. So we need to look at 35. Right? Now, I know the constant term is a negative 35, but we're just going to look at 35. We're just going to take 35. All right, so since this time the, the sign of the last term here is, is a minus, we're looking for factors of the 35 um, whose difference, right, whose difference is the coefficient of the middle term, right? So we start with 1, start in order. 1 times 35 is 35. The difference between those is 34. Well, that doesn't work, right? So we have 2, 3, 4, none of those divide into 35. We got 5. 5 and what? So 5 and 7 gives you 35. And the difference between 5 and 7 is indeed 2. Everybody see that? So the 5 and 7 is what we need. So we come down here, do our parentheses. We say x, x, 5, 7. All right, since the sign of the last term is a minus, then the signs in the binomials have to be opposite signs. And recall that the sign of the middle term goes to the larger number. So since the middle term here is a positive 2, the plus goes with the 7. And then that means this has to be a minus 5. And you multiply these out, and you would get x squared plus 2x minus 35. Okay? All right, let's try another one. We have x squared minus x minus 6. So again, you walk through the whole idea of, all right, is there a greatest common factor? No. Uh, there's not two terms. We have three terms. And is it of the form x squared plus bx plus c? Yes, it is. The coefficient of the x squared there is a 1. So this time we need to look at factors of the constant term 6, whose difference, because it's a minus 6 there, so factors of 6 whose difference is, what's the coefficient here of the middle term there, right? 1. Don't worry that's a negative 1. Just say it's a 1, right? The difference is 1. So we have 1 and 6, 2 and 3, right? So we need... What, the difference between 1 and 6 is 5. The difference between 2 and 3 is 1. All right. So we have x, x, 2, 3. All right, so the signs have to be opposite signs because the sign of the last term was a minus. So the, the larger number gets the sign of the middle term. So that's a minus, so that goes to minus, and that goes to be a plus. So x squared minus x minus 6 factors out to x plus 2 times x minus 3. Right? And again, if you multiply this out, you would get x squared minus x minus 6. All right? So that's, that's the idea. All right? So let's try a couple more examples. All right, 3x squared plus 15x plus 18. All right, so the first thing you want to look for is the greatest common factor. Do we have a greatest common factor here? Yes, we do. So we want to factor that out first. You have 3 times x squared plus 5x plus 6. Right? Now, inside the parentheses, parentheses here, we have x squared plus 5x plus 6. That's a trinomial of the form um, x squared plus 5x plus 6, right? So we're going to see if that factors. All right, so we want factors of 6 that do what? That's right, we want factors of 6 that add up to 5. Well, what would that be? What times what gives you 6, but when you add them, gives you 5? That's right, that's 2 and 3. So this part goes to x, 2 x, 3, and since this last sign's a plus, these two signs of the binomials have to be the same sign, and they are the sign of the middle term, so they're both plus here, and then the 3 goes along for the ride. We see that x plus 2 doesn't factor anymore, x plus 3 doesn't factor anymore, so this is the factored form of our original trinomial. All right, a couple more. All right, x squared minus 4xy minus 21y squared. Hmm, things are a little different here, right? All right, we've got two variables in play here, right? But walk through the process the same way. Look for the greatest common factor. There is nothing common to all three terms, so there's no greatest common factor. Uh, we have three terms, not two, right? So now the only difference that we notice is that, well, we've got two variables, right? But notice there's a symmetry going on here. We have x squared, and then x for the middle term, and then no x, right? And then we have y squared here at the end, right? 
and then going backwards we have y, and then the first term has no y, right? There's this there's a symmetry going on here, right? If that symmetry thing happens there, then you can factor it just like you normally would if the y's were not there, right? We would we see the coefficient here, the leading coefficient is a one. We want factors of twenty one whose difference is four. Well that would be three and seven. Everybody see that? Alright, so then we can come over here and do our binomials out. Right? We know that we'd have an x and an x, right? But instead of a three and a seven, because we've got to get these y's involved, we would have a three y and a seven y. Right? And then since this last sign was a was a minus, these two signs of the binomials have to be opposite signs. Sign of the middle term goes to the larger number. Bingo. And then you multiply you can multiply that out to check it. X times x is x squared, x times negative seven y is negative seven xy. And then this is three xy. Those two things add up to negative four xy. And then three y times negative seven y gives you negative twenty-one y squared. So we've just factored this trinomial, even though it looked a little weird with the y's. The process stayed the same. We just tack on that second variable there to the second part of the binomials. That only happens if you have that symmetry that I talked about earlier. Okay? All right. One more thing I want to explain. All right, let's look at x squared plus 2x plus 7. So the idea that I'm explaining here will actually help you figure out if the trinomial is going to factor or not. All right? So again, walk through the um, idea. There's no greatest common factor. Uh, we have three terms. It's of the form x squared plus bx plus c. So we need to look at factors of 7. Right, that add up to 2. So one, the factors of 7 are 1 times 7, and we're going to stick with uh, positive integers over here, right? So 1 and 7 add up to 8. That does not give, that is not the coefficient of the middle term, right? So since 1 and 7 are our only options to add up to the coefficient of the middle term, then this trinomial here does not factor. Does not factor, or we say it's prime. It's kind of important to know if the uh, polynomial is going to factor or not, right? So this idea that I'm explaining uh, can actually help you figure out if it's prime or not. If you have this list of factors over here and none of them add or subtract, depending on what you're doing here, to the coefficient of the middle term, then your original trinomial isn't going to factor. Okay? All right, so that's it on factoring trinomials uh, of the form x squared plus bx plus c. Study well, and please let me know if you have any questions.